Welcome to World Cinema Reviews. This is Frank the Bear. And tonight we're going to take a look at another one of, uh, you know, in honor of Horror Month, we're doing the uh, a lot of suspense and horror directors in our director series. And today we're going to honor the awesome David Fincher. David Fincher, you know, doesn't scare us with tales of the supernatural. He scares us with reality, with people with twisted minds, with horrible imaginations. And as always, he keeps these mysteries very tight. We don't know what's going to happen until the very end, making it one of my favorite directors. He's truly an incredible guy that, I mean, deserves to be talked about and deserves the praise he get. And, you know, um, we're going to start talking about the things that make him awesome. Uh, I mean, he is, you know, he has a lot of nightmares visuals, which I always want to say. Nightmares visuals truly, truly, uh, you know, construct an awesome movie and leave a lasting impression here in the brain. I mean, we can talk all the great ones. David Cronenberg, Dario Argento, you know, all the people that are going to be, uh, you know, featured in my, most people that will get featured on my director series, they know, they know how to give you shocks. And there's no more shocks than in the movie 7. Uh, some of the, uh, the movie 7 basically talks about, um, you know, a serial killer that reenacts the seven deadly sins uh, with a twist that you know it, it's both sad and shocking in the very end. Uh, Brad Pitt Pitt's, uh, plays a detective alongside um, Morgan Freeman and they both do a superb job. Some of the visuals that are included there are, are just visually stunning. Um, you know it's sometimes what you don't see which is the most creepy. You know I still remember that you know you know that um, Brad Pitt saying, "What's in the box? What's in the box?" And and, and you you already know what's in the box without even knowing it, uh, without even seeing what's in the box. You know, and what's in the box is trouble and sorrow and pain. And um, Kevin Spacey, that's an amazing job as as a trouble troubled individual, <laughs> to say the least. Who um, can I can't say anymore? But if you haven't seen Seven, it's an awesome film. But I want to—I uh, actually want to talk a little bit more about other films that he did. And first of all, even though Tyler told me not to talk about it, because the number one rule about this film is not to talk about this film, but I just have to talk about Fight Club. And, and, and Fight Club once again stars Brad Pitt, but now it stars also Edward Norton. Norton is this just troubled individual who basically uh, is having a job that he doesn't really like he is his life is kind of empty he, he doesn't know he's going to support groups or things he doesn't even have and and, and he uh, you know meets this uh, girl Helena Bond Car played by Helena Bond Carter and and they both are going to a journey of discontent depression and uh, you know in, on one of his travels, he meets this Brad Pitt character, and uh, uh, basically they start a fight club. They start pummeling each other, you know, really hard punches, and drawing blood and everything. And other people see it and they start to join. And you know, it's a stress reliever, man. You know, beat people up to the pulp. But that's not what Fincher intended. Fincher intended to. You know, put a real metaphor of what it is that what is what does what is happiness first of all. You know, he said you know because th there's this ideal bedroom that you know um, the Edward Norton character has in his head, where he sees the IKEA chairs. You know, he sees everything that he, it, it's awesome, all the furniture that he could have, and then he says, you know, for what? It, it, it's really nothing good about it. Um, the uh, you know he, he it's an act of self-discovery and he's just you know 
it's a there's one great reveal of this film which of course I'm not gonna take I'm not gonna talk to you about but you know it's a shocking turn at the end once again Fincher just does an amazing job and uh, at first you know I think the first time I didn't catch it that I saw it and uh, it, it was really shocking to me and uh, the acting is both superb you know he knows how to pick his actors Brad Pitt great as the uh, rebellious against society Tyler, you know Tyler Durden you know Brad Pitt playing that character and the, the very meek you know uh, personality of uh, Edward Norton who reveals to have a few problems let's just say so Fight Club it's an amazing film by Fincher it's 100% recommended that used to be my favorite film of Fincher until another film came along and we're going to talk about that a little later let's talk about another film that I, I really think that you know really captures you know the tension that, that you know the suspense that Fincher has and and it's panic room this young lady I mean this young lady moves with, his, with her mom into this empty you know uh, very sophisticated expensive apartment uh, we has, which has a panic room a panic room it's a it's a hidden room somewhere in the house just in case there's a home invasion a robbery type of thing you know you can actually go in there and uh, you know the robbers can rob the place but you know you'll be able to contact that police and you'll be safe they can't do any harm to you or so you think and um, basically Jody Foster walks into the wrong place because it turns out that there's robbers that are looking that there's something inside that apartment other than her goods and they threaten her life and her daughters and the best thing about that movie is Jodie Foster's acting she's amazing in that I mean how she protects her daughter with her own life the things that she does uh, there's drama it reminds me a little bit of uh, of Cujo when the little kid is having that, those asthma attacks and you know it's a Stephen King film and um, Stephen King adaptation I'm sorry and uh, the uh, uh, definitely the this reminds me because there's a uh, the, the young lady that uh, is her daughter also has a physical condition that um, makes it hard in and some of the thieves uh, you know they're they're divided into the useless um, the 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 somewhat honest but you still want the money and the uh, the ruthless and they it's a battle of wits you don't know what's gonna happen panic room fantastic movie it's, it's just David Fincher just never disappoints you uh, finally you know the the last film that I wanted to briefly talk about here uh, you know it, it's it's the awesome awesome Gone Girl Our, I'm not gonna go deep into detail because I've already done a review but Gone Girl oh my gosh I mean it's a story that gives you drop by drop that's Fincher style he doesn't ever overwhelm you uh, he, he always you know gives you everything I expected out of this movie and more was delivered Nightmare's visuals especially at the end Oh my gosh! Unbelievable uh, suspense of the of the wazoo, unexpected twist. Who unbelievable and and a great reveal. Yes, there's a great reveal at the end. I'm never gonna tell you about it because you should watch it. But what makes it great? It's just a movie about this guy, you know, this uh, played by Ben Affleck, that you know sees this lady that. Um, um, you know and and gets falls in love with her and she's a successful writer and you know they fall in love get married awesome everything looks great but you fast forward to uh, three years later I think I believe it was three years later and the marriage is falling apart uh, they no longer love each other they found that they are very annoyed of each other Affleck kind of neglects her 
uh, she also has other issues and they just don't get along and they're heading to a divorce so it seems until she the lady disappears of course you know having marital problems the police look to Affleck as to being a main suspect that's where I'm gonna leave it you think one thing and you deliver another that's Debbie Fincher's beautiful 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 I mean I, I can tell you that this man is just and um, he just does amazing amazing work um, I don't think that he has ever really really made a, a you know a, you know a, 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 ter a terrible film uh, I know there's a lot of critics of uh, I, I hate even to mention Alien 3 but he had some problems with production and budgeting and he feels that he wasn't given a fair shot and full power to direct well and he kind of has expressed his feelings about that film that he he regrets that deeply you know according to some stuff I read and um, he's not never gonna be pleased with that and you know kind of he says that he doesn't no one dislikes that film more than him but I mean if this guy I mean what what else can you say? He, I'm, I'm gonna say that Fincher is, is a terrific, awesome. I mean, other films that you want to check out, of course, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo remake. You definitely want to check out The Social Network. The, you know, the story of, um, of the uh, founder of Facebook. Uh, the Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Zodiac. They're all great. I mean, this this guy, he's got a resume. What I know is that Gone Girl is not my favorite film. You should watch it. You should start watching pretty much every film that he made. Even Alien 3. I, I find that there's some, some good things about it. I mean, uh, what he put into it. But definitely, that, that will be the least. Um, best, best, best thing that he done, you know, I would check out definitely Fight Club definitely Gone Girl and and uh, I would definitely will say Panic Room and The Game that's another great movie I mean I can go on and on watch him thank you for watching the director series take it easy peace out take care enjoy David Fincher David Fincher I salute you my friend stay cool